a jaguar is roaming southern Arizona. It is the only known jaguar in the wild in the United States. The last sighting of this jaguar was on January 6th near the Chiricahua Mountains. The last jaguar in the United States calls this mountain range right here that we're in right now um, its home. So we lovingly refer to this cat as Sombra. For at least three years, he's called Arizona home. Most people think of jaguars as only living in tropical jungles in other countries. There were jaguars that once roamed throughout the U.S. and they were found throughout Arizona and New Mexico, probably all the way to the East Coast. As people came west, we wanted to tame the west. We brought with us cattle and cattle really were the demise of jaguars. They disappeared because they were shot, trapped, poisoned. These were, for the most part, government-funded programs. Back before the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service became the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, we were, we were a different agency. We were also responsible for getting rid of predators on the landscape. People believed in the 70s and the 80s that jaguars were effectively gone from the United States. Then in 1996, two males were detected. Suddenly we knew we had jaguars in the U.S. again, including this one that currently lives here in the Chiricahua Mountains. So this is really, really exciting. We have a large cat scat or poop. This has a high probability of being jaguar. I'm not able to tell in the field. This one has hair. That hair looks like it could be a jaguar hair. A few meters away, we have a verified jaguar kill from several months ago. The jaguar actually sat here and sharpened its claws. Any forensic remains from a, a jaguar kill, whether that's um, scat or a kill site, is is incredibly rare. And you know, we're talking about fewer than a hundred ever documented cases, probably in the United States total. Jaguar is a top predator. Top predators are known to do a lot of regulation for the species that are lower down in the food web. Whereas, for example, if you remove the top predator and nothing is eating the animals anymore, then you get this what's called an ex explosion of some species. So then you get all of a sudden there's just deer everywhere and the deer then start eating the plants and then these plants that would have normally formed the forest in 100 years are now not forming the forest anymore. And what we've seen is it also promotes invasive species because invasive species can often get a grip on ecosystems that are sort of collapsing. This is a white-tailed deer that was um, killed. Every morsel of meat has been consumed you know, by that cat and then also by scavengers that came across it. And I think it just helps to demonstrate how important these apex predators are because um, you know, there's a lot of other species that are relying on you know, getting a nice meal. Jaguars, they're not a threat to people. If we had populations of jaguars in the United States, the conflict with ranchers would be, you know, almost zero. I mean, there's just so much prey here. There's an abundance of wild-tailed deer. There's many times more white-tailed deer than there was in the 1950s. Jaguars travel to Arizona from Mexico. There's a larger population in the Northern Jaguar Reserve, which is in Sonora, Mexico. Every jaguar that we've seen in Arizona has been a male. And the unique thing about males is that they disperse. When they're young and they don't have a territory yet, they go, I, I gotta head out and find a, a great place to settle down, find a female or two and have cubs. Well, unfortunately, they come up here and of course there's no females. They have this incredible journey and they pass through highways and farmlands and ranchers that are trying to kill them and, and they finally get here and then they hit this wall. Here at the Guadalupe Canyon area, we're in the Peloncillo mountain range. This is the best habitat for jaguars. And what you're looking at is the, uh, the final terminus of the wall. I would say some domestic house cats couldn't get through that. This wall is 
pretty impenetrable. It's totally impenetrable. And it's definitely separating wildlife from suitable habitat, and it's killing wildlife. If you fragment populations by putting, let's say, a border wall between, you increase the probability of extinction for both of those separate populations. I guess I would just say it's, it's 30 feet of, of hatred and fear. and stands for nothing but, but all the wrong things. So we think the answer is going to be that they'll have to be, in wildlife biology we call it translocated. Some ranchers that are members of the Jaguar Project had said, why don't you just get one of these females? We've got some extra females here and take her to the United States. I said, well, we can't do that. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's legal. So it's illegal for um, scientific organizations to go and do this. It has to be done by U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. It's really expensive and involves a lot of time and effort and funding. To provide animals for reintroduction to the U.S., those Mexican populations would have to be rock solid safe. And right now they're not. There are female jaguars on ranch lands in Sonora being killed right now. If we just incentivized trapping a few of those cats that are going to be killed and you know, bringing them up here just to get the population going. In 24 hours, we could recover this species. Hey, we haven't lost jaguars forever in the U.S. It just takes the will, the political will, and some investment to bring back this noble creature. If anything, working with jaguars for 21 years now has taught me is that they belong here, they've always been here, and that we need them back here. I spent a lot of nights out there just sleeping in the back of my pickup truck with the dog just to, uh, you know, get an early start in the morning or cover as much ground as possible. So one day in particular, we got up with the, with the sun and I was just, you know, having a cup of coffee, putting my boots back on. And, and then from down in the canyon below us, I hear this sound that just sent shivers up my spine. This was the, the jaguar was uh, doing his chuff. It's, it's called a chuff. It's kind of like a, oh, it's a deep, deep-throated bellow. My dog was, I mean, she's a fearless dog. Anytime we came across a bear or a bobcat or a puma, she would just chase it. No, no questions asked. But this morning when she heard that sound, she just slunk over and she tucked her tail in between her legs and she just hid behind my knees. And so I knew, I knew exactly what it was. It was that jaguar. I, I developed a, a real special bond with this animal. It's hard for me to even uh, call him an animal. He was like this, this mountain, this sentient mountain spirit is how I began to see him. And the the relationship that we had was, uh, it really changed the course of my life. <laughs>